Well, hello. Uh, another crazy, crazy bat excrement day. I've yet another Bluetooth video about vaccination. So what I've got here, um, I've got this device, Android. Um, that's currently connected to the device I'm using because what it, this is doing uh, via Bluetooth tethering. Uh, these are just all my development phones, to be fair, I've got one there as well. So this one's actually, if you look there, it's actually Bluetooth tethered to this. That internet connection on that device is coming through this device I'm filming with now. I've got my uh, Zettel payment card reader. Um, I don't know whether I'm going to use this. It's this my work device. I don't know if I'm going to use that. That's probably a big no-no. Um, but I don't know. I'll I'll pair it. With, I'll, in fact, I'll pair that with some headphones as well. Um, I won't show the uh, original Mac address of that, but I will show it paired. Um, also, so I've got this uh, JBL little Bluetooth speaker as well. So the idea being is this, the Zettel, and the Nexus 5 are basically going to be paired with this device that I'm recording on now. Um, I've got a directional um, ultra-wideband antenna, which nicely centers around between 2.2 uh, and 3 gig, so that's perfect for this, being 2.4 gigahertz Bluetooth. Over here, go to my field tablet, I've just got, um, that's just going to be running the uh, HDI tool, or oh, Kismet, I'm not too sure yet, it's currently running uh, HDI control capture, um, and then obviously everything else that's going on. Um, I'm going to use, uh, so this, this comes down this cable and goes into a few it goes into a Bluetooth um, capture device at the back there, as well as there's another Bluetooth device doing the HCI capture as well. Um, the idea with this is I'm going to do a spectrograph, um, and I'm going to do some um, like packet monitoring, basically promiscuous packet uh, monitoring or sniffing, if you will. Um, yeah, so I'm going to have uh, two readouts on this. I'm going to capture everything, obviously, from the overhead camera, into my big machine, which isn't powered on yet. Um, and then I'm going to prove effectively, and I want this, you stupid anti-vax mother... Yeah, you guys. I'm just going to prove that once these are all paired, they don't give off a recognised manufacturer device that is on the OUI database. They don't freaking do it. You'll see, when I first pair them, you'll see Nexus 5, you'll see this device, you'll see the speaker. You won't see the Zettel, obviously, because that's an in... Um, and and it basically, it's, it's an app that does that on a different kind of protocol layer. But you will see it. it's randomised MAC addresses communicating. So when all these people, when you know what, I, I walk around a shopping centre and there was just loads of Bluetooth addresses and that's because they're all vaccinated. Well, it's not, it's because... Although this is a speaker, it could be headphones. It could be a smartwatch. It could be anything. You'll see that all these show up when first paired. As soon as they're paired, it's just a random Mac. It's just a random freaking Mac. And I think since Android 8, and I think especially Android 11, even when they're not paired, the devices, now the phones, don't give off what, what they are, basically. Um, they wait for devices, peripheral devices, to advertise what they are. Once the peripheral device advertises, then it goes, well, I'm this, you can connect to me. But then it still keeps that randomised security protocol going. Whereas like the, this older Nexus 5 will say, hey, I'm, I'm Nexus 5, um, here's the first three octets of my MAC address, go check out the OUI database. But even though that's an old device, once paired, boom. It's a randomised Mac. So we're going to demonstrate that today.
cool. Uh, just to put this to bed, I mean, I've done two, three, three videos I've done on this now. And it's got to the point where you're just like, is obviously not a lot of people watch my videos. Fair dues. You know, I don't care for the, I think, I think I've reached about 5,000 people now across all my videos. That's fine. I, I'm happy with that. That's 5,000 people who know better. Um, but, you know, it's like, come on, really? Uh, anyway, sorry to waffle. Let's just get on with it. Let's get it done. And then we can see how much BS these people are talking. Like, no, well, no, 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 it's it's a security protocol. It's, it's this, it's that. Um, no, you've got to set that in your phone if you want to randomise your Mac. Well, it's a lot of bullshit. <laughs> right, so let's just get on with it. Jesus. It's my fourth bloody video, guy. Fourth fucking video. Well, it is such an honor to bring you Hope and Tavon today. Hope and Tavon uh, uh, from Fix the World Project Morocco are a husband and wife team with backgrounds in the US Navy, energy engineering and business. They do an absolutely phenomenal job uh, researching, you know, particularly um, this one subject that we're going to focus on today. But, but we've got so much ground to cover. We're going to talk about MAC addresses. We're going to talk. Yeah, so um, a little bit of uh, background on Hope and Tavon. Yeah, sorry, Hope and Tavon said that right sorry if you didn't um yeah so they effectively um make these um like trinkets that apparently absorb electromagnetic waves um well, apparently rare earth <laughs> rare earth um minerals and stuff uh yeah so that's kind of Let's set the stage for them. So they, they create stuff that effectively stops the 5G getting into your house. You know, stuff that you... A, a sticker you put on something and um, apparently absorbs the 5G and electromagnetic uh, waves. Well, each to their own. Everyone's going to make money. So, okay. Just thought I'd set the stage out there. Talk about the nanotech. Um, and, and they also specialize in products that can shield you from uh, EMF radiation, and we, we will talk about that, go. harmful EMF signals. We will talk about that a little bit later. But Hope and Tavon, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate your time. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Thank you for this opportunity, and I think that people are really going to get a lot out of the information that we're going to present today. Yeah, thank you, Maria. Thank you. Well, well, the people always get a lot out of your information, and I'm certainly looking forward to it. Um, where would you both like to start? Because I, I just think you're both such a wealth of knowledge. You, you start from wherever you want to. Well, we've prepared some slides because that helps us to to curb the conversations. We've got about like 25 always, slides. And always with with the slides as the convincer. It's like, look, we've got slides. Or there's an Excel spreadsheet, which they're actually not doing any mathematics in. Um, so I use um, Excel spreadsheets for binary notation and uh, kind of quite complex mathematics, um, algorithms, etc. So like you get these guys, it's like a big Excel spreadsheet. All you've done is just stuck images in it and text, and you're like, all right. So what's the point in having something that is capable of doing some serious maths? And you just stick it. But this is not what they're, they're going to show a slide. But it's the same thing. It's it's the whole convincer. You know, it's I've got a document. I've got stationery. I've got this. I've got that. Anyway, enough waffling. Let's watch on. And we can just go ahead and jump right in mm -hmm. um, because there's so much to cover. We're, we're calling this presentation Advanced Technology Put Inside of Humans Without Our Knowledge. We're going to talk about Bluetooth, nanotech, 5G, EMF activated, and also self-assembling all the different attributes of uh, what's what we're finding right now. Here's a uh, brief summary of what we'll be covering. So first, why most people don't want to talk about the technology used in the COVID agenda, Bluetooth technology basics. And we're going to have Tavon, who's a uh, network technician who's laid down the cables that, that's going to explain all about how Bluetooth works for the average person to understand. Um, also, evidence and tests showing that the MAC addresses and EMF emitted from humans how to scan for Bluetooth codes. Ingredients found in the vaccine are just like computer components. We'll talk about the microscope army, the tests done on the injection components with EMF, and also evidence that they're already scanning human bodies for proof of injection. Um, right, so I'm gonna skip on a bit. Um, 
get a bit deeper into the video. I'm obviously going to have to cherry pick it. This this video is uh, it's an hour, 25 minutes long. Um, I'm not going to put you through this. So I'm just going to cherry pick the points. If you want to find this video, it's um, on the Stu Peters network on Rumble. Uh, I think it was released about six, seven days ago of, as of the 11th of January. So cool. We're also going to be talking about how they track and trace humans using these biological technologies. The white fiber structures found by the embalmers growing in the vaccinated uh, deceased. Fantastic. Okay, Thank so you both. Uh, no, no problem, Maria. And now what we're going to talk about is the Bluetooth technology. Oh, goody, goody. Basics. Uh, now, before I get into it, uh, I just want to mention a little bit about where I'm coming from with this. A lot of this research has been accumulated over the past couple of years uh, because in our own way, we were targeted. I was targeted. Um, and I, I mentioned it briefly on a couple of places, and including your, your show, where I was a targeted individual. And the things that were happening to me was done electronically. And so it took... Yeah, so the, the typical grift backstory isn't it really. I was I was targeted, you know. They came after me and come on man, jeez. <laughs> so I uh, I know more than anybody else, you know, you're like okay, all right, anyway, moving on. Me a couple of years to figure out how it was happening. And it just happened so that it took me on the, a branch of research that included remote targeting. Um, so that that led to the building of our building our book, our writing our book, and it turns out that the information that was in that book, due to that previous research, is coming back to this. Um, so I'm letting you know where I'm coming from. That you know, I'll, we, I, we've been in our own way, but me, I've been on the receiving end of this. Um, I think there's been trials leading up to the events that we're all experiencing now, and I think now in hindsight. Uh, God has put me in a situation to where I can share this. We can share this. Oh, just get to the point, man. Jesus Christ, this video is going to be about two hours long. Just get to the bloody point. Excellent. Okay, so we're going to talk about the the mode. And in this this Bluetooth technology basics is, you know, like the first question is how the technology works and where does the signal come from? So Bluetooth is a wireless standard uh, similar to 4G or 5G. And it's mainly used uh, to communicate. Uh, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's not at all. It's, it's nothing like LT, LT plus, or even GSM. It is completely different. It's not, uh, none of those technologies in the 802 family. Um, this is not how cellular technology works, I'm afraid. Uh... With uh, devices within a short range. So, you know, you have like a, a Bluetooth enabled uh, on your phone to contact a, a Bluetooth speaker that might be within like the your kitchen or your living room. Um, so that it's an easy way of, of two appliances or two devices talking to each other. Now, what's interesting about Bluetooth that makes it unique as far as how it communicates is that while data is flowing between two devices that are Bluetooth enabled, uh, the frequency modulates. The, fr the frequency is constantly changing. It's seen as a security feature um, to Bluetooth. Um, but Bluetooth is also um, very easy. You can... Um, no, 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 it's not. All digital frequencies modulate. So we need binary. So there's a one, there's a zero. Binary makes bytes transmit those bytes it gets received a byte buffer on the receiver and then gets broken down the source code cherry picks what it needs and then presents you with I don't know music content whatever it, it, the, I don't get why you're saying it mod modulates sir because the modulation is literally the binary I think what you have looked into but not quite grasped I think you're on about the uh, frequency spread spectrum or the FHSS in Bluetooth where it hops between different frequencies um, across a set bandwidth or set channel. Um, well, that's kind of most digital technologies do that. So you can effectively send more binary a lot faster. 
and yeah, it can be seen as a, a security feature, but like GMSK, for instance, loads of protocols use it. I don't, um, I'm not quite getting exactly where you're coming from there, but uh, well, let's listen anyway. Attach all kinds of uh, small circuits and, and devices um, using the Bluetooth standard. So it makes it a, a very a very reliable technology. If you want to have all kinds of sensing equipment um, in, in indoors or outdoors uh, that are Bluetooth enabled, you simply, if you see the device uh, within range, you can connect to it um, by pairing with it. Uh, so the protocol is that that's that's pretty much it. But it's meant for short range type of ac activity. Uh, so it's great for sensors, things like that. Uh, how the technology is set up and, and how it functions on different levels of access for technicians. Uh, so this, this question is mainly for, uh, you, you, have, you have developers and you have hardware technicians that uh, either uh, create the hardware or set up the hardware or create the software that interact with Bluetooth. Um, and you, you can basically create uh, authentication levels to, to, to test the, uh, the network. Uh, what's this tangent is going off in? I don't, I don't quite get it. So he's gone from trying to talk about Bluetooth security protocol, wrongly describing frequency modulation. And now he's talking about basically the whole chain from hardware development through to, you know, the, I suppose, object oriented language that you interact with on the screen in your device that some developer wrote and give you a, a cool app. Um, I don't get where he's going. He's, he's all over the place. He's not addressing Bluetooth at all. And now he's going off in talking about developers. And uh, uh, well, Let's see where he gets, but it's not looking good for him. Not at all. Uh, but for the consumer end, uh, they simply just need to pair the device to another device uh, in order to get the service. Um, now, my older phone, we, we, when we did the initial um, replication of La Quinta Columna, where they were finding that they, and other, other people that were uh, scanning for Bluetooth codes, getting the anomalous uh, six pair uh, uh, character set that, that, wasn't a, that wasn't a common name, uh, when we replicated that, I did it on my older phone, so I had to go into developer mode on my Android phone, and that that that's not something that everyone has to do, especially now with the new Bluetooth apps. What is he on about? Right, clearly he's on about the six octets in a Bluetooth MAC address. But he's saying it, the way he's just said it. I mean, why is he not referencing the OUI database? I don't get where where is he coming from? Um, I just can't bend my head around it. What what is he on about? I'm gonna to have to listen. Uh, sorry about this. So I've got to put you through this, but the guy's just babbling on and on. Uh, developers and users. Uh, yeah, what? Talk about the tech. The technology. We're supposed to be talking about what's inside the injection. That's the way you described it. Oh, so bloody describe it. It's Jesus. Um, but I just mentioned that just to show that normally that kind of thing where you have to go into developer mode is something that is is if you're developing a new app or. Oh no! 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 He's on about developer mode. <laughs> oh. Wow. Wow. Developer no mode in Android is nothing special. It's literally so you can activate ADB. So the Android debug bridge, when I develop Android applications, I like to do it on a live device because I, I develop a lot of stuff that uses GPS and obviously Bluetooth and uh, Wi-Fi protocols and other stuff with sensors. And it's good to have sensors. You can emulate the sensors in with the Android SDK, NDK, whatever. Um, but it's it's just cool to plug a device in the USB, then export the application APK file over ADB. Um, that's 
effectively what developer mode for and in developer mode you can go in and you can change settings so you can overclock the gpu um, to an extent you can stop certain render aspects you can force errors force close applications so you can stress test your app what he's saying there he's making out like it's some magical access um, to the Dalvik virtual machine that the Java-based Android runs on top of it is not. This is not some low-level um, technology. This is user. This is surface user-level tech he's on about here. I, d I don't get where he's going, developer mode. I mean, obviously, that's what he's on about before with developers, but that still doesn't make any bloody sense. Oh, no. Stop it. It's like, it's magical. It's developing. It's like, no, it's literally so I can access that, plug USB cable in, run ADB and export my application to that device and test it. it even without ADB, I could just literally set up a server on my network and download it via Wi-Fi and change the permissions. The application runs unsigned and put the app on the device that way. I don't even need ADB, but ADB is just convenient to plug a USB lead in. And then I can run a the debug bridge on my machine in a terminal or in the um, Android Studio or Eclipse with the SDK or whatever. And I can see if the app fails. I can see what sensor failed, why it's failed, what the exception was. Is it the fact that my Java code in the catch block isn't catching the errors? So the, the error is basically terminal. It's forced closing the application, stuff like that. Anyway, I'm, Going off a tangent, but that's what it's for. It's just testing. I don't understand where he's going with it. It does not make you see anything completely different. I know you can um, do certain things with Bluetooth in there. Um, what's it bloody called? There is a setting in there, but this doesn't really matter. All you're going to do really is just see randomised MAC addresses, um, which you should theoretically be able to see with a Bluetooth application or in your, your Bluetooth settings anyway, so I don't know. Uh, but that's basically what that's there for, is just so you can see devices and why, why it failed and yeah, anyway, tangent, back to the video. Or if you're working on the phone and, and you're working in an operating system, you're creating a new program. So it's a higher level of access. It's a higher level of access. That the normal consumer normally doesn't have. So there right. there is levels of access. Okay, so this guy's going across some kind of tech expert, but he doesn't know his high level from his low level. So it's it, it, the way they're describing it, it is high level. Um, in, in the true sense of the word, it is, it is high. In, it's in the user sphere of the device. Low level, down in the, the depths of C, and the assembly language for the ARM processor, that's low level. High level is user land, okay? <laughs> This guy's coming across like yeah, I'm a bit of a bit of an expert, me. Um, yeah, yeah. And it's like, dude, you're totally backwards. <laughs> but anyway, benefit the doubt. But they both agreed, so it can't be like a slip of words. I do it all the time, slip my words and go, oh, oh, sorry, not high level, oh, low level. Uh, not that. Well, I don't personally, but people do, right? We're only human, you know. That's what coffee's for, anyway. Access to these codes. Can, is it too yes. early to ask what a higher level of access would it, would it enable you to do? Does it allow you to hack? Mm. Yeah, potentially, yes, yeah. yes. And um, no, it doesn't. Not at all. Uh, you cannot launch an exploit from an Android device via Bluetooth. It'd be impossible. If the device was rooted. Granted. Rooted gets you lower level access. <clears throat> They're saying this in the premise of like high level accesses in state secrets or high level accesses in the president of the United States. It's not, it's low level. We're talking the low level part of the operating system. The high level part is user land. But no, you can't use an Android phone without rooting it and then building a special program or you know maybe um using python from a terminal and putting the libraries on so you get a a special kind of uh yeah i suppose actually no you know what no because it is yes yeah, a unix 
uh, kernel, isn't it? So it will, it'll, yeah, you could, you know, Python maybe and get the blues library for Python. You could possibly do it then with a rooted device, but it would have to be rooted. Um, but also as well, the, the it depends on the um, Bluetooth MCU that's in there. So some MCU supports a um, packet injection, packet monitoring, but most in mobile phones don't really. Um, some of the older phones do, like the uh, Google Nexus. Um, there's some special binaries you can get that um, effectively allow that to happen, but in doing so you lose the entire functionality of the device because it can only do one specific task. Um, yeah, it's it, no, it's not going to happen on an unrooted device with developer mode <laughs> checked. I'm sorry, that's not how it works, not at all. Um, it's it's too, as they say, high level. It's in user land. It's um, it's not. It's no, you can't you can't hack. I mean, you could probably do some advanced AT commands with the right program. So get a Bluetooth terminal um, or a library to run from terminal. You'd probably be able to send some AT commands and maybe inject into an older device and get it to do some uh, but at the low level part of the system no chance anyway moving on tangent although uh, bluetooth inherently has like for example hopping between different frequencies while it's transmitting and receiving data from one device to another it still doesn't prevent you and actually um, depending on what magazine you read or what publication you read uh, Bluetooth is easy to hack or can be hackable um, through other means, like you go around onto the device in a way that's not Bluetooth, uh, not through the Bluetooth means, or you, you get some data about the user and get them to download or click on something that allows you to get into the phone that way, for example, if, if it's through your phone. Right. All right. Well, yeah, that's generally, you've basically, the whole platform potentially is it can be exploited right so you know malicious actor who sneaks a reverse tcp shell onto your device yeah if you download that app and it's got reverse tcp shell and you know they basically force a route get low level access you're, you're pwned that's it you know you everything you do on that device is it's been uh been, you know being monitored or potentially they can operate your camera microphone etc um, but that's like, he's going off on a tangent again because that's got nothing to do with Bluetooth. But he's trying to say, oh yeah, but um, it's now to do with Bluetooth. That's just an exploit that could come in, you know, from, I don't know, if, probably um, an SMS, a zero click exploit or an injection vulnerability, it, you know, um, SQL vulnerability. Uh, Android shared preferences could be exploited by inter-application communication, but that's not Bluetooth, man. Sorry. Right, so um, how to how to read a Bluetooth uh, code MAC address? So I don't know if that's referring to. Well, that's like when when you're doing the scan and you see a whole bunch of addresses come up. Mm. So basically, the addresses that are part of a device, they'll say like Oppo for the phone or they'll say, you know, Toyota, if it's a Bluetooth coming from a car. But if you see what looks like this right here, which is uh, six pairs of numbers with colons between them, this is an anonymous MAC address. Um, no, it's not. It's six octets of a MAC address from a machine. I'm sorry, but no, no. And yeah, you might see Toyota, but as soon as that person pairs to that vehicle, you won't see Toyota anymore. You will see a MAC address like that because it'll be randomized. It's Bluetooth security via obfuscation. Sorry. No. Again, total and utter BS. So that's how you know that that's coming from a human body and not. Well, I... No, it's not. You've not even addressed anything there. No, none of. Both years. I mean, I'm going to quit this video in a minute because it's pointless. But like, you're starting off that you're going to describe Bluetooth, then you don't describe Bluetooth. You start talking about developer mode on Android devices, and then you start talking about Bluetooth exploits. But then go off in a tangent, which is just any exploit on the entire platform. And now this, and it's like, 
really in the human body. That's that's how I know that's in the human body because it's a randomized MAC address, or maybe not even randomized MAC address. I mean, it's just six octets of a MAC address. The first three, the manufacturer, and the last three can either be the model from the manufacturer or just random. It's you know, it's the LDAP, whatever. It's it's tied up to the manufacturer. In fact, the manufacturer, if it's Shenzhen go in China half the time, they just randomise the max anyway because they don't have a OUI database listing. So they just randomise them as long as they don't use Samsungs or Apples. Nobody's bothered. It's been practice with Max on Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and other 8 or 11 protocols for oof, best part of 25, 30 years it's no different now than it was then sorry BS I, I wanted to ask about this because is it possible now I I had been in shopping centres for example before and other public right. places and searched for Bluetooth and so many come up but I'd never seen hundreds of these just you know 12 pair uh, six pair um uh, um, anonymous addresses come up like i do now but is it possible that 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 right well yeah you're in a shopping center there's hundreds of people with smart watches headphones well bluetooth headphones bluetooth smart watches and bluetooth phones so straight away if somebody walks in with a smart watch the airpods in and a Bluetooth enabled phone, which is obviously connected to them, then the Mac randomized because it's, it's gone through the pairing process. It doesn't need to broadcast itself anymore. As say, hey, I'm an iPhone. Hey, I'm an Android phone. It doesn't have to do that anymore. It's now connected. So it just randomizes the Mac. For every single person, potentially, let's say, there could be three devices the watch, the earbuds, and the phone. So you're going to see three randomised MAC addresses from each of those devices. So let's be fair, let's say, you know, out of the 2,000 people in that shopping centre, a small percentage of them has their earphones on, a small percentage has smartwatches. When you add up the fact that somebody could have two or three devices on them, 100 people potentially has got, you know, 200, 250, 300 devices attached to that group of 100 people and then you look at the um, point of sale systems now that you know the, the bluetooth ones are attached to an android phone or more than likely an ipad a lot cheaper than what they used to be there's them as well all adds up hello so we have our devices we're going to test to prove this BS. Or should I say disprove this BS? Right. So our first device, this is tethered to this device. Basically, this device is giving it its internet connection. Um, so it's constantly sending packets back and forth. It's not going to disconnect anytime soon. We have our speaker and our Zettel card reader as well. Um, right, so what I'm going to do now is just pair pair that speaker to our device. See if I'll click two. Cool. Right, so what you'll notice is all these devices are connected. Just got to give it time. <laughs> cool, so you'll notice how it's... Um, now deleted uh, Nano Def Master 2 and there is random MAC addresses being found. That's because this is not advertising anymore so I go back into settings. In fact I'll do it on the other device. Settings, Bluetooth. Get 
give it a minute and it should show up. There we go. So that's Nano Nano Def Beam One. That's Nano Def Master. Cool. So I've stopped that advertising. And while that's doing that, I shall start my Zettel. Yep, cool. Get yeah, you up and running. And you'll notice how now it's deleted that device. I can't find it anymore. It's not advertising. But there is random MAC addresses as well. So our Zettel is now connected. Right. And our speaker is on, so we can prove that. So what's happening now is that these devices are randomising the MAC addresses. As you can see, that we're doing a, a scan that's just refreshing all the time and it's not finding these devices, but as soon as we go in settings and allow this to broadcast, yep, and there it is. Stop that broadcasting and it just goes into a random MAC address connected to that. This JBL speaker isn't available anymore. The Soundcore Life, that's actually a different device, um, but that device is a multiple pair device, so it's constantly like a TV, basically. So, okay. So you'll be asking, <clears throat> what's all this about then? So you see it's uh, forgot Dano, uh, Dano, <laughs> Nano Death Master 2. Yeah, that was pair back to that Zettel, actually. That'll give us a few more randoms. Yeah, so you'd be asking, well, what's all that about? Well, there, the claim is that because the MAC address is random and they can't um, find the first three octets of the MAC address, that this is in the vaccine, that is some nanotechnology in your arm or whatever um, that's broadcasting. And apparently, even though it's some weird nanotechnology which defies laws of um, computation and laws of physics, thermodynamics, <laughs> hydrodynamics, you name it, it completely, completely defies it all. But anywho, I digress. So the the claim is that uh, these random MAC addresses and yada, yada, yada is, is you know, some kind of weapon that's in the vaccine and you're squawking, you know, out of all, all the technology advancements and all the protocols I could use, they chose Bluetooth. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the not only Bluetooth, but Bluetooth we can see. <laughs> I mean, you can see loads of random, you know, UUIDs and everything coming up there. Uh, loads of random MAC addresses and stuff going on and these aren't being picked up. Uh, obviously the Zettel wouldn't be. Um, but this is another thing they say, you know, oh, well, I went round a shopping centre and uh, there was loads of these Macs, so it's definitely, definitely, it's the vaccinated. It's not, it's these. Years ago, um, a point of sale system, beef, what, two and a half grand? Now you can get this, 20 quid, delivered. An iPad, even an Android phone, as you can see. You can use an Android phone on it. It takes like 10 minutes to set the account up online. And there's your pop-up store, you know. And these are being used everywhere now. So there's a factor that you'd be picking up. And obviously this, although it's a Bluetooth speaker, this could be some of these AirPods, earphones, smartwatch. It does not matter. So all this randomizing, you can see the more 
MAC address is becoming randomised. <clears throat> That's all it is. It's it's ridiculous, but yeah, all right, you know, oh, yeah, but I was in a shopping centre, and it's definitely it's not. It's people's devices connected to the peripherals, and also as well stuff like this. And the reason why stuff like this doesn't want you to know it's that is because if there was an exploit for it, if the hacker knows that, yeah, that's a Zettel reader, he can concentrate his attacks. His attack surface is really, really broad. Um, and you don't have to do much target enumeration if it's just broadcasting, I'm a Zettel. But because it randomizes the Mac, that attack surface has now shrunk and it's really hard to launch an attack vector. Say there's an MCU in there that's a problem. It's really, really hard because effectively what's happening is it's security via obfuscation. So what's known as LE privacy is cycling through these MAC addresses and randomizing them. So you can't know what device is, so you can't attack the device. But these anti-vax idiots, they, they just don't get it. I've done three videos prior to this one. I've got one more video to do because some nasty, horrible bastard is going around grave sites pretending to pick up Bluetooth signals. Well, there's a problem with that. And that problem is the dielectric constant of soil, the relative permittivity of soil, if you want to be more new on that kind of science. So the relative permittivity of the soil is quite high. It's, it's in the late 30s, 40s, um, and that is attenuating off the signal, and the signal just can't get through. Even like 300 mil of soil, it's killed dead, especially 10 centimetre waves lengths, like 2.4 gigahertz. Is. It's just not getting through. Um, same with the, the claim that these are transmitting out of your arm. The 20 millimetres in the, into the deltoid muscle, which the injection site is, or at least the end of the needle is, in the deltoid injection, uh, just that skin alone as uh, and the muscle, the, the dielectric constant of that would attenuate that signal off. You'd have to get right up close to re receive that signal. So I'm going to do a video there. I'm going to dig a hole, bury a phone in it, play some music until the music stops. And also as well, obviously I have the spectrogram as well. So we'll see the signal attenuate off and die away. So yeah, um, this one's busted again. I've already busted it. It's my fourth video, man. Come on, and as you've seen in the clips, they're still going on about this. And it's like, no, no. Look here, we are. I'm sat, and I've got a live readout going here of all these MAC addresses of these devices, randomizing the MACs. It's it's security via obfuscation. You idiots, stop mentally. Damaging people. It is so freaking annoying. Stop it. And if you're out there and you're worried about this, don't be worried. It's all bullshit, all right? Oh, I mean, four freaking videos I've had to do with this. Four videos. Because they're still going on with the grift and it is so, so annoying. So annoying. But anywho, um, I digress from that point. Because if you don't digress from that point, it will drive you insane. Just like these people are insane. Well, they're not the ones who are insane because they're the ones making money because they feed you all this bollocks. And then lo and behold, after that video, the next uh, Telegram post down is, Hey, buy this shit to get the nanobots out of your system and go and detox and this and join up to my detox subscription program and sign up to my substack and please fund me i'm in trouble with the law because i've been basically grifting and ripping people off but because i've been ripping you off now i want you to put into my crowd justice and i go fund me for my law case even though i've probably got about 2.5 million pounds stuck away in the bank but you know no that's that's, that's money, that's my money, I want your money to pay for my legal fees. It's absolutely grifting you, it's a pyramid. And the guys at the top, or the girls at the top, are the ones making all this rubbish up. And then they're selling you crap. They're getting, you know, subs. And the the more, <clears throat> you know, like the Elon Musk-esque kind of platforms going, well, oh, maybe we should, you know, let them through. It's been a long time since the vaccine was a thing and stuff. The more that happens, the more they get monetized, the more money they make, the more thirsty they get for making up this bullshit, the more they put out there. But stuff like this, I mean, you know, it, it's just security via obfuscation. It, it's it's LE privacy. Go go Google it. Like Bluetooth.com slash LE privacy and you'll come across it. In Android 8, actually, to connect with that device, if this was Android 8 and above, especially Android 11, 
Uh, this device, which is Android 7.1, I think, uh, that my developer, so these are my development phones. I've got an Android 11 phone, it's my personal phone, I don't think that MAC address being out there in the wild. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> In, in the newer Androids, um, 8.0 on, they do not broadcast anything. It's a random Mac. It, it, literally, you have to pair it with this device first or pair them together is 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 quite um, difficult because they don't actually broadcast like we've seen. Um, if I do this, for instance, piss off. Uh, if I do this, and you'll see, it'll start to come up. There we go. So you see, that's actually the MAC address of the device. It's actually the device name. Uh, with the newer Androids, um, under the, the, the new um, Bluetooth LE policies for Android 8 and up, it wouldn't show that. It would show a random MAC out of the box. It's only because you would open this device to pair and then pair it inside there, unless you're pairing two devices together and then you've got to um, uncheck pair the device then recheck so yeah i mean <clears throat> that's effectively it here we are um again for fourth video in and as i say you know a, a, a grave is coming back to that which i'm going to do a video on a grave is you know two foot wide six foot deep um the signals attenuated off in just a couple hundred mils of soil because of the dielectric constant of soil and wet soil is probably 20 30 millimeters to be fair um so no signals cannot come you can research that itself just type in a search engine dielectric constant of soil relative permittivity of soil boom it's there you can take the math away from that and then because they do it in um like through line on a vna kind of through line testing on it um or free air testing you can take that math away and then you can expand that into the depth of soil at six foot deep <laughs> and you can kind of work out that there is not a cat in hell's chance that, that signal is getting through that soil even at a very shallow depth um so yeah the people saying that you can get it from a grave site absolute rubbish because the dielectric i say i keep going on about it but you have to and you've got to drum it in um the dielectric constant of soil is too great to allow that signal to attenuate in the way that they're trying to say it is uh same with the deltoid muscle in your arm you'd you'd have to get really close up to receive a signal um to get the power density to get that signal through and break through that uh, constant material and the, the, the dielectric resistance that material or dielectric capacitance that material um, would have to be a high power density uh, effectively you're going to get skin heating in the muscle and it's going to be really uncomfortable that just like a very like a miniature microwave as it vibrates the water molecules um, a high power density inside your skin which would be horrible um, because uh, another thing as well, um, the people might go, no, but, 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 no, well, but, 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 effectively is millions of years of evolution within our solar system has allowed mammals, especially like us, to attenuate the electromagnetic waves that come from the sun. Now, it's not just light that comes from the sun, it's the entire spectrum, the entire spectrum, barring some really nasty stuff in the radioactive end, but it is all the waves that come from the sun is the entire spectrum we can just see the visible part of it the light part of it um so our bodies have evolved to attenuate electromagnetic waves so it's bullshit all the 5g's everything is bullshit and it's just down to the dielectric constant of human skin the dielectric constant materials it's just not going to allow it I mean, don't forget the sun puts out a thousand watts per square meter. I mean, if we can put up with that, we can put up with 0 0.1 watts at 40 meters away from a 5G tower, can't we? Okay, well, anyway, thanks for watching the video. I am really sorry I ran off into a tangent there, but as you can see from our outputs, this is just. There we go, just go back in. Well, that one's powering off, but yeah. <laughs> back in. There we go. Yeah, yeah no, 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 Deathmaster. So actually what we're going to do is we're going to drop the, uh, forget the JBL.
and power that down. Power it back up. Cool. Just show you that as well, because it uh, I paired it quickly before, so I left it running. There we go, JBL Clip 2, uh, pair with that. Cool, connected. Right then, uh, I'll just leave you with uh, a bit of X take. Guy's a sick guitarist if you're into your guitars anyway. Just show you how this uh, is going to randomise now between the two devices because of new new repair, and you can see it's deleted the JBL from that because it JBL stopped transmitting. Um, it's Discovery. It's not. It's, un, it's not. Uh, sorry, it's probes saying I'm a JBL. It stopped transmitting them. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. I'm just going to leave it running so you can see uh, more random Max. Cheers, guys.